Hello, I am Ron Baker and welcome to Empowered at Last. Today's subject is about relationships. Such an important exploration in all our lives. We don't do anything that is not about relationships. Even the relationship you're having to yourself when you're in your alone time. That is a vital relationship. As a matter of fact, this inner relationship is the most important relationship you'll ever have. But for today, the subject is there are four people in every relationship. And I don't even just mean your primary relationship with your partner. Every friendship. Four people in every relationship. What in the heck are you talking about, Ron? Most people find this a very surprising concept, but I'm hoping in the next few minutes you will become much clearer about what that means and you'll be able to go, Oh my God, it helps me understand my relationship with this person and that person so much more fully now that I get this. So let's give a context so that you can understand what I mean by four people. In our lives, we have three layers of consciousness that are possible. No worries, I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. Three layers of consciousness. Did you know that in the first eight years of your life, you literally create one level of consciousness that becomes informed and even programmed in your nervous system, physically, emotionally, and mentally. Everything you experience, whatever your impressions were in the first eight years of your life, became a stamp in your nervous system, and we're going to call that child consciousness. Now, if in that time you got all kinds of nurturing and encouragement and education about yourself and you got everything you needed, then you will have learned to land in an inner connection to your physical self, your emotional self, and your mental self. All of that would be so trusted, which would equal, I trust my value. I'm just a little person. I'm only seven or eight years old, but I already trust that I'm safe and nurtured and that I have value and that my needs are just as important as everyone else's in the family. Well, guess what? I live in the same world you do, and I know what the specific nurturing needs are in those first eight years. I spend a great deal of time teaching those very things in my school of self-mastery in New York City. However, I have never met one single person who got that kind of clear education so that they feel fully connected to self, ready to continue to expand on that first level of child consciousness. Trusted, safe, authentically trusted self in child consciousness as the center ring of your life. I've never met a person who got that. And so what happens when we don't get that is we become wounded and protected. We personalize everything that's happening in those first eight years and we don't claim our most authentic self, ready to go to more and more layers of authentic self. Instead, what happens is that we end up with experiences of fear, shame, and judgment in that first ring. When that happens, we become quite protected, defended, and even frozen. What do I mean? If you have all those imprints where no one really knew how to value you and teach you how to value yourself, then you will have become frozen instead of trusting to go further and further. If you come into a connection with me and I treat you badly, you're going to start to protect yourself from me. You're not going to trust, oh, I'm just going to keep opening. It's not a problem. I don't mind. I want to grow into more and more with Ron. No, not if I'm not treating you with value. 
you will discover what the limits are and that will be it. I'm only going to go so far. This is what happens to people and they don't even know that it's happened because no one has really given a healthy education about life and self. And therefore, a big part of all of us becomes frozen in child consciousness. But we don't stop growing physically. We don't even stop growing mentally. We literally continue growing through adolescence and then into adulthood. The second ring of three, the second ring is adult consciousness. Well, a lot of people will say, well, Ron, of course I'm in adult consciousness. I'm an adult. I'm functioning just fine. Yes, I hope that is true. I hope that your adult body and the things you are doing in your life are fulfilling as far as you've learned how to go so far. However, if you don't know how to go back in and reclaim, nurture, and heal the wounded child consciousness in the center ring of yourself, that colors every part of your adult life. So you can feel Let's just say you go to a business meeting with people that you really want to impress, people you really want to become a part of your life, to invest in your company. Or let's just say you're at a dinner meeting with people who have the potential to become new friends. And all of that is going so well and you're proceeding in your best version of self so far and all of a sudden you turn over a glass of water and inside you panic. Oh my God, I can't believe I made a mistake. Oh my God, they're not gonna like me. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm so embarrassed. This is so terrible. This is just one example of millions of examples we could choose. What happened in that moment if all of that comes up, fear and shame and judgment, aha, the very things I said were in the center ring. If fear, shame, and judgment come pouring out, you're no longer in your empowered adult presence where you go, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry that I did this. And inside you're going, I'm so glad I know that mistakes happen. It's no big deal. It's not a reflection of my lack of value. It's not a reflection on all of the wonderful greatness that I have to bring to the table. Of course I can make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. If you're not fully in calm presence, empowered response, and fear, shame, and judgment come up, guess what? You now have an adult who has been interrupted by the trigger of an inner wounded child. And I have news for you. Every person at the table at your business meeting or your luncheon has an inner child who's wounded and the best version of adult self that they know how to bring to the table. Now let's just shift this to your primary relationship. I guarantee you, if you've been with your partner, for at least six months or a year, you've begun to discover, oh my Lord, when I first met that person, they seemed so together and so loving and so willing and so fill in the blank. Then all these other parts of self started to come up. They become so moody and so defensive and so reactive and they're so angry all the time or they're never happy. Or there are four people in every relationship, hopefully two adults, and then definitely two wounded children. And if I, adult Ron, am in a relationship with you, then I need to be quite well aware I'm having a relationship in this moment with you with three other people my own wounded child, your adult, and your wounded child. 
guarantee you, all I have to do is trigger, whether I want to or not, whether I meant to or not, trigger your wounded child, and instead of the adult talking to me, I'm going to be in a moment with this wounded child. Well, guess what? There needs to be space for my wound and your wound. A successful relationship requires that you embrace this new concept. Of course there are four people in our relationship. We need to know that. And there are tons and tons of layers that you can know from there. But for now, let's just plant the seed so that you can begin to have compassion for your own wounded challenges and you can have some compassion for the other people in your life when they're not able to just be in their present, conscious, willing adult selves. In order for you to feel a little safer, let's just do one more quick inventory. Just ask yourself, do you wish that your friends would only show a certain part of themselves and that they pretend that they feel wonderful all the time and that they only trust you with a tiny part of themselves while they hide, shame, and judge the other parts? Or do you prefer that people would trust you enough to have a better and better relationship, one that includes more of who they are so that you can have meaningful connections that are authentic and safe and that have tons of potential to grow and deepen. I bet if you ask it that way, you will see that having authentic is profound. Why in the world do we live on a planet that is pushing 70% divorce rate? Whether people get married or just break up, it's probably way more than 70. Why? Why can we not sustain long-term relationships that are fulfilling and continue to grow? Because there has been so little understanding that there are four people in the relationship. If you don't know how to have a relationship with yourself and your own wounded child, learning how to nurture and resolve and champion any challenges that you have gathered in your child ring of consciousness, then you really can't have that profoundly healthy relationship with the other person. And in the moments where two adults show up, it's better than the other moments when one or both wounded children show up. What usually happens is that one person's wounded child gets triggered and comes out and gets reactive, and that triggers this person's wounded child, and all of a sudden there are no adults in the room. So important to not only know this concept, but to find out how to deepen this relationship. And as always, I'm gonna guide people back to ronbaker.net because I have spent the last 25 years not only helping people with this relationship inside themselves with profound, wonderful results, but I do tons of couples therapy where people learn how to relate to all four people in the room. No matter what, find somewhere that you can get the help you need whether that's at ronbaker.net or whether you go somewhere else to get that help. So dang important because whether you embrace the reality or not, it's still the reality. You're only as effective as your awareness and nurturing, valuing relationship to you. And then you can bring that to all the relationships, not just your primary one all the relationships of your life, and your life can get better and better and better. That's what's possible. Have a great week. I will see you soon. Please pass the word. 
tell people about the podcast. It is so exciting to be bringing this conversation about anything and everything that you want to talk about. Let me know on ronbaker.net or at my Facebook group, Empowered at Last with Ron Baker. Let me know what you want to talk about. Send me your questions. Send me your needs. Let's deepen this relationship. That's the opportunity. The, the ball is in your court. I'm showing up. Have a great week. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. Before we close, I wanted to encourage a couple of things. Number one is to go to ronbaker.net. There you will find lots of clues for how you can deepen this conversation. You can also find a way to get the booklet, An Essential Guide to the Nine Nurturing Needs. This is going to be a core focus of how we're going to enhance the quality of your life from the inside out in all the episodes. So I encourage you to go there to get an overview of those nine nurturing experiences that we all seek more than any other thing in our lives. I also want you to get involved in the conversation here. I really would like to talk about the things that are important to you. The things that you're concerned about or excited about. We live in a wacky world that is changing constantly. We need to learn to connect to ourselves, to count on ourselves, and to count on one another. So please either get involved at ronbaker.net or in the Facebook page, which is Empowered at Last with Ron Baker. I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to deepening this conversation about life. And I close as always, choose well, live fully, and by all means, be good to you. Have a great week.